So far, when we've saved our files, we've gone to the file menu and just chosen Save As. And the reason why we've chosen Save As is Save As usually means save this as a file name different than it was a moment ago. And when we opened something originally, it came from, let's say, a template file that comes with this course, or came from a raw file, or something else where I didn't necessarily want to save back into the original. So Save As allowed me to type in a new file name and save it out, choose the, the file format. Once I've done that once, so if I choose Save As right now and just call this frame finished, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, afterwards, once I already have the file format specified and the name specified, from then on I'm just using Save, and Save will be grayed out if you haven't made any changes to the image. So a lot of people are used to that. Save as would mean I want to save it under a different name or a different file format than what it's currently in. Okay? But then we have a choice called save for web. And when do we use that? Well, you'd think for the web, right? But if you want to save for the web, we need to think about it a little bit. Because your camera captures big pictures. Pictures that are usually way too large for the internet. And so I want to talk a little bit about how we think about what size our picture will look like when it gets on the internet and how I deal with that. If you want to see how big any photo would appear on a website, if you were to just save it, hand it to somebody and have them upload it without anything limiting its size, what you want to do is double click on the zoom tool, the one that looks like a magnifying glass. If you double click on the zoom tool, that's how big your image will look on the internet. So this picture is going to be huge. Okay. If I don't want it to be this big on the internet, if I want it to be something else, what I want to do is zoom in or zoom out on my picture until it looks the size I want it to look on the internet. So just imagine I'm looking at a web browser right now. How big do you want your picture to be? Well, I don't want it to be where I have to scroll around it to see everything. I want to at least be able to see the whole thing. And that would be pretty darn big. I want my picture to be about that big. Okay. So just zoom in or out until the picture is about the size you want it to look on the internet. Just imagine you're viewing it in a web browser right now. Now here is how to get it to actually end up being that big when viewed on the internet. In the lower left corner, there will be a percentage that same percentage will be shown at the top of your image in the tab where the file name is. It's the same number. That's how much you've zoomed in or zoomed out on your picture. What you want to do then is go to the image menu and choose image size. In an image size, you just need to make sure one checkbox is turned on. It usually is, but you just need to double check. And that's this one called resample. Resample means allow me to change how much info is in this file. If it's turned off, it can't change the amount of info. Usually, these little pop-up menus will either be set to pixels or inches, depending on what you used last. What you want to do is set them to percent. And after you've set them to percent, you want to look at the percentage that's down there in the corner of your picture. That's the percentage you want to type in. So I just typed in 12.5. Click OK. And your picture's going to look tiny. Right? But you're typing in whatever number showed up in that bottom right, or bottom left corner. Right? Now, to double check that everything worked, double click on the Zoom tool because that gets you to 100% view, which is always the view of the image that you get on the internet. So double click on the zoom tool, and it will be exactly the size you saw earlier. So do that before you use the choice called Save for Web. Okay. So what was it? You zoom in or zoom out until it's the size you want it to be on the internet. Look at the percentage that's in the corner. 
You go to the image menu, you choose image size, set the little pop-up menu to percent, so it's not measured in inches or pixels, and type in that percentage. And then click OK, and it's going to scale it down such that it would appear that size on the internet. If you want to test it, double click on the zoom tool. That'll show you 100% view, which is internet view. And you'll have it. Then you can go to the file menu and choose save for web. When you choose save for web, on the right side, upper right, you can choose a file format. And these are the general ones we have when we're saving for web. If you have a straight photograph, then JPEG will give you the highest quality and smallest file size. If, on the other hand, you have a graphic, meaning a logo, a signature, a bar chart, uh, something that doesn't have photographic detail, instead something that has large areas of solid color, then stay away from JPEG at all costs because it's for photos. JPEG will make your graphics, your logos, and your text look like it's been had popcorn sprayed on it or something. It'll have this chunky junk around it that looks terrible. You'll see it on almost every photographer's website because photographers think JPEG's the best. JPEG's the best for photos, not for graphics. Instead, for graphics, you can use GIF or Ping. I would usually use Ping. It's a more modern file format than GIF. Uh, but you also use ping for photos if you need a transparent background. So in this case, we have white out on the edge, but if I hide the bottom layer so I see a checkerboard and I want it to still be empty there when it gets on the internet, so whatever is on the web page fills in the checkerboard instead, then when you're in here, even though you have a photo and it's not the most ideal file format for photos, you want to choose ping. And I, if I choose ping 24, there's going to be this checkbox called transparency. The choice called GIF also has transparency, but that transparency only has one level of transparency, which means something is either completely gone or completely showing up. There is no in-between, which means if there's a drop shadow or something else that softly fades out, it can't do that. It's going to clip it like a pair of scissors. Whereas with ping, uh, it has 256 levels up to that of transparency, which means you can have a soft shadow and still maintain it uh, with that. If you choose uh, ping 8, you still can get transparency. You'll get a smaller file size as well uh, in there. You got a lot of different settings in here. Most of the stuff you can ignore, but the uh, setting that controls with ping uh, your file size and your quality is the number of colors. So vary that number. Try to go for the lowest number that gives you the acceptable uh, quality. So we have JPEG only for photos, photos that don't need transparency. And we have GIF or Ping for graphics and or for photographs that have transparency. You need to be able to have that drop shadow or something and have it lay over on something else. And when it comes to either ping or GIF, the thing that controls both file size and quality is the number of colors. So try to go for the lowest number of colors that gives you acceptable quality. Right. So that is um, saving for web. Yes? So what if your website says you need a specific pixel range or, or maximum pixel range? Okay. Does it How say work, maximum work width and height kind of thing? Yes. Oh, that's fine. Then instead of doing what I, I did, the first thing I would do is if you have any transparency around the edge of your picture, uh, do this. Trim. Um, do you remember when we had the choice called reveal all? where if I move something so it extended beyond the edge of my document, I chose Reveal All because it made my document larger, big enough to show me the stuff that went beyond the edge, right? Somewhat of the opposite of that would be Trim. Trim means make my document smaller and just get rid of empty space. So when I choose Trim, it asks what do I want to trim away? And in this case, I have transparent pixels, and that means the checkerboard. Get rid of anything that's pure checkerboard until you hit something that is different than checkerboard because that's not needed space. 
It's transparent. When you open it in a web browser, it doesn't show up. It's full of empty. So when I choose OK, it just sucked in the edges of the file until it hit the first thing that's not transparent. Because emptiness contains nothing. And so if they're requesting something that is you know, 500 pixels wide, and you got a file with a bunch of transparency around it, it's a logo, and then emptiness. Why scale the emptiness down to 500 pixels wide? Why not scale the, what's in that emptiness to that? Does that make sense? So first, do trim if you happen to have empty space around it. Secondly, go to the image menu, choose image size, and you're going to have this set to pixels. And just type in what they said they needed for the maximum. And it would scale it to that particular um, size. 